like to present to you the first results of uh, the project RPCM Apulia, uh, meaning Reconstructing Prehistoric Communities uh, Mobility in Apulia, which is currently underway as a cooperation between Münster University Germany, Bologna University Italy, and the Superintendenza in Forgia. Our aim is to conduct landscape archaeology in uh, southern Italy um, and do social network analysis with the wish to improve our knowledge of uh, Apulian prehistory. We want to analyze the influence of human presence on the territory and we would like to gain an understanding about how prehistoric communities kept in touch with each other. So this is the area and if we zoom in a little bit, um, this is it. It's bordered in the west by a river valley, the valley of the Fortore River. In the east, we have the outskirts of the Gargano Mountains. Uh, in the north, the area is bordered by the seacoast, but also two large sweetwater lakes, which is uh, Lago di Lesina and Lago di Barano. And in the south, uh, south of the city of San Severo, um, we have the northern border of the Tavoliere, which is a large limestone plateau with very fertile soils. Um, Apulia is of special importance uh, for the Neolithic and the Copper Age in Italy. It is uh, this place where the first Neolithic settlers entered Italy around 6000 before Christ. And uh, it's probably also due to these very fertile regions here. I already mentioned the Tavoliere Plain with fertile soils over a limestone substratum. And also other regions like Alto Piano delle Mugge is a very uh, fertile uh, region. And due to this, uh, these um, areas being made up of limestone, it's also these regions tend to karstify. So we have a lot of caves that have been used already since the Paleolithic times, but also during the Neolithic and the Copper Age. And of course, and this has been said before, we have to um, take into account the special situation of the Gargano, uh, which bears large um, flint formations, uh, which have been mined already since the earliest Neolithic. And these landscapes, together with the seacoast, the sweetwater lakes, and uh, these raw materials, um, poses quite an interesting research area. Now, I would like to give you just a real a quick overview of um, the chronological scope of our project, which encompasses the times from the earliest Neolithic to the early Bronze Age. And as I mentioned, the first Neolithic settlers set foot on this earth around 6,000 before Christ and started to own the landscape by creating villages surrounded by large ditch systems um, whose yeah, actual function is still widely unknown. And yeah, they took possession of the landscape in this way. And everything changes a little bit with the end of the Neolithic and human impact now starts to become more intricate relationships with communities from uh, neighboring uh, regions and regions farther away start to intensify and settlements now change as well. They arise now progressively in points of control, in points of transhumans routes and um, by the start of the early Bronze Age a lot of these sites tend to become fortified as well. These changes in settling also reflect in the material culture. Um, after the Neolithic we have this uh, Facis Machia Mare which is um, yeah, which marks the beginning of the Copper Age, and uh, it shows similarities to pottery from the regions further to the north, to the region of Abruzzo, but also along the sea coast, and further down south to Calabria. And we cannot talk about archaeological cultures in this sense, but it's rather a set of ideas that is shared by different communities in a larger area. And this intensifies in yeah in the middle Copper Age with the Facis Piano Conte further stressing connections to the, to the south, to Sicily as well. For example, there's very close parallels at uh, Lipari, at, um, at these sites in Sicily with very similar pottery. And again, it's not one big cultural phenomenon, but it's rather a set of ideas that yeah, is distributed as traveled. And in the end of the Copper Age, the Facis uh, La Terza emerges. And again, it displays strong connections to southern Italy and uh, interactions again intensify uh, in this part of Italy. And we can notice that new types of economy arise during this time. They lay more and more emphasis on the possession of land, um, the control of routes, the control of um, yeah, economic and transhumanist routes 
beca becomes crucial. And for this reason, settlements were set on top of hills, for example, close to inland watercourses, also close to the sea coast, to gain control, to dominate passages of the landscape. In order to find out how communities communicated, how they interacted with each other, we employed a set of different methods, and my colleague Roberto will now take over. So, good afternoon, everybody. So, uh, whereas we recognize the important role of Apulia during the history, we have some problem with the considered area, just because uh, we have uh, an archaeological breadth frame because, the, because of the anthropic uh, action acted during, since prehistory to today. So uh, we started to collect all the information about uh, the site uh, from several sources, uh, such as mm, the Britain sources or sources about uh, <coughs> the landscape usage or changing. So uh, we use uh, the bulk of this data in order to perform some uh, um, analysis. First of all, for example, the viewshed analysis and observer point analysis that it gave, uh, gave us uh, the, um, the field of view from each site and we, um, we, um, uh, we use this analysis uh, uh, on the uh, site um, located um, uh, uh, along the, the river Fortore. So the triangle are ancient and Neolithic settlements. The uh, colored spots are the area that the, the sites could see um, with uh, um, a maximum radius of visibility of uh, 15 kilometers, with good weather conditions, of course. And we established the, uh, the height of the server to uh, 1 meter and 65 centimeters. So, uh, uh, to continue, we applied to this side also the buffer zones in order to understand uh, the, um, the interaction between the sites. Every buffer zone has a maximum radius of uh, um, uh, 3 kilometers, that means uh, uh, 1 hour 25 uh, minutes working distance with uh, an average speed of 4 kilometers per hour. So, we continue with the least cost path analysis in order to obtain a predictive model about the mobility into the area. So, uh, the starting point is the red point from which uh, uh, all the uh, path network spread uh, into the area, reaching uh, all the other sites. So, uh, in order to obtain this kind of uh, model, we uh, decide to, uh, to get a smoother surface, so a more weighted surface, and then um, create an accumulative uh, surface raster in which the cost was calculated by the uh, Tobler's eigen function. Uh, and then the result is uh, uh, this path network in pink. So, uh, anyway, uh, all these data <laughs> Uh, as to um, verify and check on field, uh, for instance, uh, through uh, surveys. And uh, uh, all these data also we want to use uh, um, in order to perform also analysis with the social network analysis, in order to create a network about the uh, mobility and the circulation of the artifacts. So, from these first attempts, uh, we obtain these results. Uh, in detail, uh, according to the viewshed and buffer zones analysis, uh, we could assume that uh, um, each um, site located on, along the river had a good visibility on both shores. And uh, especially for the settlements, uh, Place the, in the medium northern part, that there would be a, a good connectivity. So uh, we could assume also that uh, the river uh, worked uh, not as a barrier but as uh, a communication way for the, the sites uh, spread along the river line and perhaps also 
for, in, in, for reaching uh, the sites uh, uh, in the surroundings. According, instead, according uh, to the uh, least cost path analysis, we could assume that the, uh, the, um, there was a, um, a good connectivity um, and uh, um, the, there are two kinds of uh, connection. One is straight, so to site to site directly. And the other one, instead, uh, in order to reach the settlements that uh, was placed uh, far, uh, far away from the starting point, could uh, involve some intermediate stop. These stops uh, could be all the settlements themselves, or some areas in which we uh, found just some um, pottery shards, so like passage point. So, um, the, uh, um, as I first said, uh, these results um, uh, um, will involve also the social network analysis in order to um, create a network about the role played by the settlements. So, for example, according to the site position, so if, uh, for example, a site wo uh, <coughs> was uh, very close to um, a connection way, maybe it played an important role into the network. While uh, if uh, it, uh, um, it, it, it was in a between position, maybe it played a role as a hub, or if uh, it was uh, outside of the network, uh, probably it could mean that uh, uh, it was uh, outside of the, um, the communication way, of very far away, of course. So, uh, involving also technical and statistical uh, uh, analysis, we, uh, we want to uh, create also a network uh, about um, the circulation of the artifacts into the area. So, understand if uh, there were some influences both inside the area or coming from the, the surroundings. The same with the elemental uh, physical uh, analysis, uh, with which we want to uh, achieve the um, elemental uh, composition, so understand also the, the kind of raw materials and, if it's possible, to understand the uh, raw material um, extraction point, in order to understand also if uh, it was uh, local or maybe it, it was uh, outside of our area. So, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you.